Hello there, I'm John and before we head off to join Robert in the north of England, I'd just like to thank our recent patrons for supporting our channel and joining our arty community. So thanks go to Karen Brungart, Andrea Steinbock, Anuprita Kerr, probably pronounced that terribly wrong, Meg yeah. Newbury, Ken Loke, Sherry Huntley and NN. So thank you so much and I know you'll enjoy our live arty tutorials in the coming months. We've got so much in store and we also recently helped support uh, the Philippine Pastel Convention and I know some of you may be joining us today for this class so welcome. Um, out of interest Robert and I will be announcing the winner of the best pastel painting later on in the show so stay tuned for that. Today on this patron special show we'll be joining Robert Dutton as I said where we'll be going to explore the combination of soft pastel and charcoal in a mixed media landscape. If this is your first time watching one of these live shows although you can just watch they're actually designed for you to paint along with um, if you want to give it a go the recommended materials and reference photos can be found on our website shopkeeprt.com uh, you can also find a direct link in the description below so without further ado let's zoom to robert now these special shows are designed to give our patrons and guests a boost of creative inspiration with leading artists and teachers from around the world. They also provide a good taster of the artist's upcoming full workshop webinar, which is happening in a few weeks' time. As we get a bit closer, I think I can see Robert. Yes, he's dashing back Ooh, inside from his garden um, into his house. Hello, Robert. Hello. How are you doing? <laughs> that was quick, wasn't it? I'm fine. <laughs> Uh, now, uh, can you believe that this is our 13th show together? So hopefully it's going to be a wow. lucky one rather than an unlucky one. And uh, we've hosted a number of workshops with you using different mediums in the past. And yes. uh, what, when and what type of paintings would you choose to use pastel and charcoal for? When would you kind of choose to use those? Well, for me personally, um, drawing and painting is, is fundamental to... Uh, all artists it's you know the split camp if you know to me but when it comes to pastels you're actually drawing with color as well as you are actually uh, painting with it and um, pastels for me are perfect for adding uh, texture and tone to uh, paintings particularly using uh, the surface quality of the uh, paper and also I use them very, very quickly for uh, quick demonstrations um, to assist newbies and students who want to get involved in art because it's an opaque medium. You can, uh, there aren't too many technicalities with it. It's picking up color and go. Uh, the box set of uh, colors that are laid out for you, um, you just literally can select those so you don't have to get into that technical Thing about uh, mixing colour because mm. you know there's so many of them and they're just ideal uh, to put into a compact set together to go out into the field to uh, as a sort of a drawing. plein air type of thing well Absolutely. I'm really looking forward to uh, yeah. to our discussions today but before we do a quick 30 second word on how this particular show will work so first of all we're going to walk through the preparation might include sketching, talking theory, or applying some of the first layers of the, the pastel or charcoal. Um, then at halfway, we're going to take the opportunity to see some examples of Robert's previous works of art for a bit of inspiration, one of my fun uh, bits of the show, um, as well as discuss his upcoming two to three hour workshop webinar, which is her happening early next month. And then finally, for those joining live, we'll complete the tutorial by adding the additional layers and detail to the painting to really bring it to life. After which you can then share what you've done at home on our Facebook or Instagram page for feedback and comments from Robert and others. 
With that out of the way, let's now get back to Robert and we'll make a start on this great class today. So, Robert, we're going to be obviously exploring this mixed media thing. Mm -hmm. um, how should people start? Hopefully a, a, a few of them have got all those right. materials in front of them. We can get messy. <laughs> yes, <laughs> be prepared for that. Yeah. Uh, the main thing is we're going to start with our charcoal, just a kind of like loose beginning. So uh, if you've got willow charcoal or blocks or whatever, you know, jump straight in on that. Um, if we go overhead, we can actually have a look at a, this is a particular painting which I've uh, started uh, previously. And uh, it's, it's bright, it's colorful, it's got plenty of, um, you know, things going on with it, uh, lively. And most of it was soft pastel over ink washes. But um, we'll come and we'll discuss a little bit more of that, you know, the freedom of it really, um, you know, combining uh, media together uh, as the class develops. Because I've got over here, um, gouache that's been applied across the top of the inks and we've got a uh, soft pastel that's been worked into wet washes and wet on the surface, which we're going to do today. But we start off initially, if we look at our uh, study or reference, you can see uh, there's a tremendous amount of, you know, gorgeous tones in it and that kind of thing. Now, what I'm going to do with it, I'm just going to turn it upside down for you. Oh because my goodness, you... disorientating. Yes. <laughs> yes. So stand outside the table. No. <laughs> so <laughs> quickly switch around. No, it's it's done deliberately so that you can all see uh, the assessment of both uh, light and dark within this, which is a kind of balance. But what I don't want you to do is think black. We don't sort of think about that in, in that respect. Uh, what I, I tend to do is I will use several of these colors um, I'm just going to move this out of the way now and turn it the right way around so you can see what we're doing. Um, if we look at these kind of colours, these are, I'm going to do a little bit of a zoom in for you on that. Now, I'm just going to get that nice and sharp, there we go. Right, so these are uh, lovely, lovely soft pastels, um, unison pastels, and the brightness of these and the depth that's what we're after. We don't think in terms of kind of black. I just keep adding them from my box because they're just so good to do. But all of those kind of like bluey tones uh, will create far more uh, of a richer harmony within the painting when we um, start to uh, develop it. So that's what we're going to do next. We're going to sort of give you um, everything that's going to go on with this now. I'll just put that back so you can actually see it. Right. So what we're going to do here, we start initially with our charcoal. Now, um, charcoal for me here, these are nitram charcoal. I just love these. These are kind of world-class charcoal. These are in, um, come in boxes. These are the fusions that you can actually see here. Let's just make that nice and See if it is nice and sharp for you. There we go. Right, so there we go. These are the fusions. And then the B, the color co co coded. These are the H ones. And then you get these super soft uh, ones as well. And at this end, of course, let's not forget um, our uh, charcoal uh, pencil. This is a Derwent charcoal. That's uh, a beauty to sort of work with. And how these get sharpened to these amazing points is by using this tool, which is a nitram sharpening uh, battle. And it's also very, very useful for pencils and all sorts of things. And if you look at my box, that's like you can see that, that looks like something you might have in the bath with you. <laughs> the back scourer. You might. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you'd need it, especially after you've been using your charcoal all, all black. <laughs> but here in this box, there's there's a this is a brilliant little box because it actually it's one of those egg sandwich boxes you, you know you can buy very lightweight. But you know, you can see the size of some of these here, um, pieces of them. These are broken pieces of their uh, larger charcoals and even compressed charcoal pieces. So, you know, the world of charcoal, I wrote about all this in, in my book, um, Drawing Dramatic Landscapes by Search Press. But uh, 
all of the charcoal elements in there are very, very useful to us, and especially when this is soft medium and you can start to work with our scene. So let's sketch it out, shall we? And um, I'm just going to select, first of all, the HB, uh, and I like the length of it. And if you look at the scene, you've downloaded your shot, you can almost divide it into one third, two thirds. So where the first field comes, I'll just show you this here, where the first field comes here, like that. That's near enough one third, and then this is just a little bit further up. You can make these markers. This is an A3 printout, um, which is a really great sort of to have, because then you can hold it up and work from it and do all sorts of things. Now so, we've had a question, anyway, should they have white pastel paper? Um, if you've got white pastel paper, fine. But that paper might be thin. It depends on what it is. Because what I'm kind of like thinking there is if you've got Canson Me Tons, not the touch. If you've got Canson Me Tons, it's 175. It needs to be pre-stretched and it's quite soft. But if you've got the Canson Me Tons touch paper, the 350, today you'll be okay with it. Just back out a little on your... Uh, use with any heavy water so because it just has a tendency to sort of cockle but, anyway. but they could use any other paper they could use watercolor paper could they oh that's right that's yeah, that's yeah. what we're using here yeah. we're using uh white uh watercolor paper here so um that's absolutely brilliant this is a not surface by the way so that's very useful and it's a 300 gsm so uh let's build this up we've got a third and then we've got the fields, and then we build what's called the structure. So these, these curving marks that are sort of like coming towards you, and these sort of sloping perspective lines, like the spokes of a wheel, they will come closer like that towards you. You see that, those lines? It can be a little bit heavier if you need to, like that, not too much. And then um, the trees, the broken stump of this particular one, and I'm going to allow my marks to sort of come out a little bit more. And then the other tree next to it, it's quite useful actually, they're separated in um, quite a number of ways. Now you can, you know, which are regular across this scene, that wasn't planned, it's just the way that uh, nature is here. And then these at the far end, they're, they're quite darker in, in those um, tree stumps. Let's get this out of the way so you can, that's a bit of a shadow from that water pot. So the, the build of these uh, marks, you can actually use your pastel quite strongly like that on the side. See how mine's actually picking up um, some of the uh, surface texture there straight away. You can sort of see how that's doing um, and building up these marks. So we're, now we've got a little bit of a close-up. I can actually show you how I would um, flick across here and build some of these like quite strong marks. Because these are going to be you know, layers that are going to go underneath. Now, a classic is the eye always follows the direction of the stroke. I always teach my students that. Here, what I'm doing is curving the marks, as you can see. And you can see already it's building up quite a bit of um, textual detail. The side of the pastel as well is useful, or the charcoal here, to, to build some of that kind of distance. Let's pull you back out to the uh, main scene again. So if I just have a look at the distance, we've got these lovely distant fields here. And I don't want to have too much sky, really. I just want to kind of like on my, this is 15 by 22. So it's half imperial watercolor paper. And then here in the background, so in effect, what I'm doing is, is I'm um, on my scene here. Uh, I'll show you with this bit of wood, <laughs> which is helping because it's the thickness of the board to so it doesn't slope. But what I'm actually doing is that kind of thing, is just sort of cutting it back because I want the, the main focus on the, the textures here, realistically, not the sky. Um, so anyway, let's just put that back over there. So the emphasis here on the background and those trees that come between. So um, a little bit of that, we'll switch to a pencil because th the pencil as well is very useful for very, very um, thin marks for our um, trees here. And again, if I just sort of, let's let's do a little bit of a zoom in on that particular area, pull this board down a bit more here so you can sort of see 
this tree here. Uh, I'm just going to add quite a bit of this sort of Derwent textured sort of pencil in here. And if you look at the field patterns, this is great because it actually shows you the uh, perspective fundamentally. All paintings have that sense of perspective in them. And a lovely big tree here that's split that way. And then it goes off at an angle the other way. Keep changing your pencil at different directions. Use your finger as well to smear that a little bit. That's not a problem. I don't know if anyone out there has actually used um, water with charcoal before. Um, Nitram invented water soluble charcoal in a tube, but they also created a powder. And if you use that charcoal powder, you can paint with it with sponges and you can also wet it. What I tend to do with most of my charcoal is this, I collect it and then I can, you know, add uh, water to that and I can paint with it because having learned from the charcoal powder, now it wasted in your... You, can, you can just create that powder with that bath scourer, can't you? Just sanding uh, yeah. it down. Yeah, I can show you how it's done because yeah. uh, what you do is you take this, this so happens to fit exactly in here, but you just use the charcoal like so to get the baton, you know, turn it over and just check the point like this very, very quickly. This very rapid tool to be able to, that's amazing. Look at that, that's like pin sharp. And then just tap this. And then I've got um, charcoal powder I can dip a sponge into to paint with, or I can do lots of things like that with it. And then we just put these to one side, you know. So, yeah, it's just, as I say, nothing wasted in Yorkshire. <laughs> we don't waste anything up here. All right. So, um, and materials are like really, really getting more and more expensive these days, aren't they? So, you know, it's just the way it goes. Well, you can't, if you can get them. I mean, it's. Uh... <laughs> well, true. That's another thing. No. So, uh, buying in bulk is, is a kind of important thing. Um, right. So, what we've actually got going here. It's just dropping into the, the painting, these main, you know, the, the sort of sketch that's kind of like going on. And I'm putting a little bit more weight behind some of these marks as well, where we're going to get um, some of the textures. Look, so you can work with that and it picks up the surface, which is already accelerating some of that foliage in, in, in that sort of area. And the split tree, I'm just going to go back and I'm going to use a softer nitron one there because that's quite dark. So I'm just switching between, if you've got sticks, that's fine. You know, and then look at the way the shadow kind of comes across the scene. So you can put a little bit more weight in here. So it's almost, it's almost looking like it's gonna be a, a charcoal drawing, but this is a great way to sort of show you my uh, looser style of drawing as well, which um, helps. Let me just expand that so you can actually see the entire scene um at the same time there we go so if we if we now look at the way i can actually build quite a lot of that and look at the way again in the foreground now these uh we're going to draw what's called we'll put the positives on later with our um lighter pastels you know here let me show you in the hand so you're going to use these kind of lighter colors um later you can see my pastel box on the side there if I give you a full extension to table and see how it's graded across here into color form okay so just let's just go in a little bit tighter again so we're just a little bit more work in this sort of central area just to sort of help with the balance of the drawing now you can actually use your finger as well to sort of you know take some of that to some of the marks down a little and now if you sort of rub it a bit more if you want to at this sort of stage you can actually use a a razor which i will because this is all part of the build of creative marks that you're going to do so what i'm actually doing here is just cutting back with these and again into some of these areas because it's we'll be layering um pastel and uh, watercolor so pastel and the um, 
uh, charcoal together uh, in context. And all of this will help build up these very, very sort of exciting marks. I want plenty of light through that sort of uh, section here. So uh, we're away to go. Now, um, we're going to put some pastels on now. I'm going to put some uh, yellow. It's a very, very soft unison. Yellow and black, lovely kind of combination in there. Yellow is a kind of like life giver to our painting. So layer in, you can already see, if I zoom in on that, the uh, lovely way in which you are getting some of the um, textures to come. That's great. So just let's keep, let's keep there at the minute. Switch now between a brighter green, a little bit of soft, this, this sort of green um, pastel stick here. And look for opportunities in your painting to see that elsewhere. So think about this as, as laying in some of your uh, first tones. Notice what I've done with the pastel. No wrappers. Oh, absolutely no wrappers on them. Because if you put them on, uh, all you're going to be doing is just using the tips. Because how I've do you know which pastel. is which, though? Do you just go by the colour? Ah, now I've been asked that so many times. But okay. <laughs> Like, okay, I'm using a green, a dark green now. I'm just going to show you how we put that dark green with the light green. So that's, again, was we'll pick up a kind of surface um, quality in there and into our sort of shadows. There's a little bit of that. Certainly in the woodland at the back. Now, this is what's called negative painting. Watch what's going on in this sort of area. Nothing wrong with it. This is called negative painting. You work around the shapes to allow these to come forward. And you can do a little bit, not heavy folks, don't rub the chiffin life out of it, but just work down here with a little bit of softer pastel like that, just to mute a little bit of those colors. The water will be doing most of the, the work um, for you as uh, it works. Now this lovely clipped hedgerow uh, it's a local feel to me, is this? Would you mind so, zooming back a bit more? Because it's we're missing. Yeah, sorry. Then. So um, yeah, I'll just pull. We'll, we'll actually go go full out again. Actually, now, so you'll be able to see what I'm doing. Right, I'm just overhead focus camera there. Right now, here um, in these sort of areas, what I'm actually doing the clipped clipped hedges. Yes, all of the area uh, where we are have these amazing um, fields. Beautiful clipped manicures and natural fields. This one was left fallow, the one in the foreground, for a long, long time. And um, then they, they sort of cut it. And this is how you ended up with this beautiful kind of texture. Now, in this section here, if you look at your printout, it's a kind of greeny, greeny dark. So that's very, very useful to put some pastel in there between the tree, like so. And then first time, we're going to add elements of uh, purpley blacks. These are the unison ones as well. Coming back to your question, you asked, yes, how yeah. do we know which are the colors um, when we have the wrappers off? Well, most manufacturers, let's just look at, as I'm talking and show how this builds. Well, most manufacturers, if not all of them, the best ones, provide you with color swatches. So you can actually purchase those. Um, the Un Unison Color Do one, which is a handmade one. Uh, and that handmade one, they actually color each swatch and actually stick it on or you can get their printed version. It depends on how deep your actual pockets are for that. I wonder what uh, the job title of that person who does that is. Pastel colorer innerer. <laughs> I don't know. But I reckon that would be a... Uh, yeah, that's, a, that's, a, that's a strange job. How do you advertise for that? Um, Trina's asked, um, are soft pastels or hard pastels dustier? Um, no, well, it depends on which ones you buy. Now that is absolutely paramount importance. I'm just going to put a, you know, quite a lot of purple in here. So uh, they're the kind of like shadows. Place the colours. Remember how we, if you're unsure, turn turn your 
turn your thing image go your reference over um, but cheaper versions tend to have more of a soft uh, more dusty they are a far more because they're using a lot more filler you see and that's like a big big problem for artists because um, you're not getting the high color rendition that you uh, really want so when when that happens um, the the dust it's horrible to work with working vertically i know we're working flat because i don't want all the the, the drips on this time to interfere with the painting but sometimes i allow that to happen but if you work vertically you have a catch tray even with the cheaper pastels they will collect on the bottom but I've talked many, many times when people have bought really cheap pastels and then somebody has been working with um, soft unison and I've, I've, or I've, I've asked, could I borrow it or use my own and shown that particular artist the difference between the high quality ones and the cheaper ones. And fundamentally, it's always in the quality of the pigments that are left on the working surface. And you're much better off always investing in high quality. Now, hard pastels of quality, I recommend are things like Rembrandt's. They are great. I've got some in my box there. So Unison and Rembrandt harmoniously work together. So people think that hard pastels are cheap and nasty. They're not. They're actual necessity to your work to get really beautiful crisp lines. Sometimes very, very soft pastels like uh, Sennelier can be too crumbly, but are necessary right at the end for very buttery marks. But if you want very, very sharp detail, then, you know, that's where you need these guys, the uh, harder oh, yeah, sticks. Yeah. Right. So now, now we've got just, this... just conscious that we're coming up to the halfway mark. Oh, Trina really? said, thank you so much for the detailed answer. That was really <laughs> great. Um, should we take a little break now or would you like to just do a little bit more? I'm going to do a bit more and I okay. want you, you to see some of the first effects of what we're doing. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take a chisel brush. Um, this, this lovely sort of chisely brush here. This is a pro arty one. And then I'm going to show you how we're able to move some of the pastel straight away. Can you see how it's moving? Mm. Now, work it so that you can, this is plenty of water on here. And I'm actually taking the pastel with the charcoal into mixing it. Look, now here, don't forget to, to wash out the brush if you feel you're picking up too much pigment. But what I'm doing here, you can see how that kind of like bounces across the surface a little bit. But here in this section, I'm able to sort of put very, very dark tints. Look at the tint that you're able to get with pastel and opening that back out so that with just a few pastels already and charcoal, look how much you are accelerating your process of painting. Same here. If I lay in to these sort of areas, these marks, and then back over here. Now, different brushes will respond in different ways. This one is a feathery brush. You can see this is a badger hair brush. And then because it's actually side strokey, you see, as I can actually pick that up. And whilst we have areas that are quite wet, like so, what we're able to do very, very quickly, let me get this sort of working into this area, plain white area at the back. I'm just dragging a little bit of water in that area. And then this time I'm going to work into it with a uh, straight pastel like that. So you can see, look at the juicy quality of, of pigments that's being built up there. Let's get that nice and tight for you. You can see that in that top corner. And then in these sorts of areas, this is drier, and then it goes into a wet area. You can use your finger as well to smear it a little bit. But again, between the trees, that's a dry stroke because it's had no water. So you're getting contrasting marks fundamentally like that. And you can leave some of the white together. So all of these are like really exciting mark making, keeping it beautifully and open there. 
The field itself has blue in it. It's like a distant sort of tone. So if I put the blue down there, we've already worked it where we've created uh, water first, then the pastel. Now here is a case of actually putting it dry, then intermix it with another soft unison on the top. So you get like pastel layering, make it hatched, and then take a fresh brush. This is another, this is another pro arctic. This is the connoisseur with the red tip. Dip it straight into a um, water jar and then just sweep right across like that. Just wow. let some of those marks go. See how it carries some of the pastel together. Don't mm. worry if you sort of smeared it in these areas. It, it's not such a big thing because you, this is all about building the marks. So already we've given you a bit of a, a great start and I'm loving what's happening over here because this is very much, and see, I can push this a little bit further up so I don't knock my water pot. But can you see the way we, even there, the, pay, the, the water is actually moving, moving on the surface. Look, you can tip mm. it, tip it and run it, which is, which is lovely. But you've still got the, the ability, if you want to, to make that a dry area, to take a tissue, a simple thing like this, and you can still stamp into it like that. So your pastels become like paint, but the lovely textures that you're being able to sort of build here. We'll be able to use all sorts of techniques like this in our big masterclass when we're, we're seriously going to be laying, layering colors over um, a longer period of time. But this, this sort of helps you build up uh, the paint. Now, I just want to show a compliment to um, Blue, which is the orange. So this is a harder pastel, this, this particular um, piece here that I'm going to be using. And I'm able to use this harder pastel to put a little bit of effort and force into those marks just at the top. Let me just get this uh, and drag it down so you can see it on the lens there. So I'm actually able to push into there and put so much effort in that the pastel itself split, but that's not a problem. But here, across these sorts of areas, you can get dry strokes, dry into wet look. So let's go for that really tight look down there. Look, dry into wet, dry and wet. You see how they're kind of intermixing and, and the marks are, are happening, which is very exciting. When this sort of dries, you can see the painted area will be then layered with dry strokes over the top. But in this case, let me change my hand for you because you can do left-handed painting. So you can just... <laughs> but here, this is lovely because you can actually work dry and then into wet like that and it carries some of it. So you sort of creating a very rich, saturated area. Back using my right hand here, I'm able to sort of show a build of all of the um, autumny kind of wintry grasses there in that sort of area. Little painting going on in its own right. Um, this tree trunk over here where the smeared mark carried, if I throw a mark that way, you can see how much clearer you get. And it's also putting a little bit more kind of sort of a, effects of shadows in there. No, I'm just gonna, gonna. I'm just gonna because otherwise we're gonna run out of the first half and it'll just be sure. half. <laughs> so we're gonna. I'm gonna interject now and uh, we'll just take a little bit of a pause because it's good to have a pause in the middle. And uh, wasn't that amazing? It was some really interesting combinations of those mediums and really uh, looked gorgeous uh, when we did those close-ups. Now at this moment, what we're going to do is take a little look at some of Robert's previous works of art as sort of examples of of what he's done in the past and it's really really nice uh, nice interlude um, and he's pulled off a couple of paintings which he's putting in front of him so i'll show you what have you chosen to uh, share with us today robert um this one is uh, definitely is a winter scene this is um uh, again a local sort of view uh it shows exactly the same techniques as i've just been explaining mm. But what's actually included within this here, especially in these sort of sections, are the uh, hedgerow brambles, which are being done with acrylic inks. 
So the acrylic ink sit on top and almost bully boy their way through that media and um, sit beautifully as a permanency here. Now, this beautiful big popular, uh, well, it is popular around this area. People don't want to see it, get rid of it. But this popular poplar tree over here was a way allowed my um, paint to, which were pastels. Uh, lots of these kind of like earth tones, actually. You can see how it's almost like match for match look. Uh, that's a unison um, color. Let's get that nice and tight so you can show you what's going on with that. And that was worked uh, with the um, cadmiums and these yellow tones into uh, these sorts of areas. Mm. So that the paint itself, the pastels like paint was allowed to um, open up and create these marks. Also, the pigments in them, they tend to naturally granulize. You can see how, especially when water is added with, with earth colors, as they do with other types. Look at the billowing clouds. These are our North York Moors over here. So um, these are the kind of first impressions, first stage in of um, the painting. Now this area, which is quite useful to sort of show you, are uh, pigments. The blues were actually used in the clouds as well. But I also used other elements. I've only got a small bit of this particular one left. A bit, this is a Rembrandt, so it's a little bit harder. And you can actually see how that pastel there was used to cut back over some of the marks when they were dry. Um, to also help accelerate some of the granulization effects with it. Look at all those which are sort of in this sort of area. I'm going to pull this back down a little bit more so you can see more of it. Um, now, if we just get that nice and tight, there you go. So you've got that lovely effect. Now, in these areas, let me just slide that a little bit over for you so you can see it. If you have a look at um, what's going on here, you can see, and these areas too, I actually use a granulizing medium, which you can buy. It's like a from Windsor & Newton. You can pour that into your paint and it helps the colors to split. So if we pull it back out, you'll see what an energetic kind of start that is to my um, mixed media landscape. Most of it done with um, the, the purity of just pure pastels on there really and uh, acrylic inks uh, next. So yeah, because it's all dried, I'm then able to work into this now and build this amazing layering. So really thrilling to yeah, see that. Um, very, very quickly, top corner. Let's show you dry strokes. You see some of those dry pastel strokes that are going on. There they are. Oh, yes. Yeah, so those dry strokes that are happening. So again, that's nice and expressive. And I've used the white of the paper all the way through without having to jump in and use my whites. So pastels like paint, folks. Yeah. Lovely. Okay, so this other one um is more green now this board this board i do this what's called my flick test um listen that's a 640 gsm board now this one is a little bit more extensively worked so you can see how the layering is going on with it exciting marks uh, ink was put underneath what well actually watercolor watercolor was gets all that solid blue you see the way this blue pings its way through here, this sort of area, and then back down again to our uh, North York Moors. Believe it or not, the same view that I just showed you, let's go back to it. This, this sort of uh, hedgerow here, as we walked along the lane, this kind of connection and these trees that are happening here in this area become this hedgerow here. So literally within what, 20 meters, we've got a, another gorgeous scene. So oh, um, this is a build of these fantastic 
pastel marks. So let's get tight on that. You see all the like the ability. This is what mixed media does for you. But a lot of it, and these marks over here on the side, these are direct strokes, you know, like picking out, you know, like here, I'm just going to jazz this up anyway, because I'll just show you a little bit more of this flicks, like that, a flicker light down there showing, and then the other side, like that. That's really good because I just kind of want to carry on with it. <laughs> <laughs> You, you thought you'd finished. You thought you'd finish this painting, but no. <laughs> no, it's not. Oh, it's just a kind of like start. But look, if I take the pastel without the wrapper on, folks, yes. look what happens. If you use the pastel like that without the wrapper on, and then as I build that on there, you see how it just sort of like evokes the ticket right back out into context. You can see what it's doing. It's showing that lovely, lovely hedgerow and all those... Um, fantastic marks this energy again that's here and all yeah. the hedgerow and all the different types of things that are going on so that's a really you know lovely beat. thank you so much for sharing that and actually we we took part in almost a completed painting there we we, we witnessed <laughs> adding a few little bits as well which was great can't um, wait to finish it yeah <laughs> now if you are watching this on YouTube and you are loving the art that you're seeing today, would really appreciate it if you could give us a, a thumbs up. That just then means that the YouTube algorithms show the video to more people, which helps us with our mission, which is to inspire more people to give art a try, young and old alike. It's just really nice to be able to inspire people with these with these amazing artists as well. Um, now, let's get back to Robert and we're going to discuss what we're going to be covering in a few weeks time at his longer workshop now it's happening at the beginning of december and we're going to be building on some of the things that we've covered today but two to three hours just gives you a lot more time to to hang out with robert and to <laughs> to really kind of get into the weeds of his tips and tricks uh with using these mediums so robert what are you what are you covering at your longer workshop Right. Well, in the longer workshop, let me just um, put this to one. Well, actually, I can probably have to cover our other painting at the moment. So what we'll be able to do is we're going to be covering a lot more, you know, that, that what I call explosive line, mm. all that kind of like line strokes that we're all, all working all, all, all the way through. So on this particular one, where you see all the different kind of like light, shade, dark, this is a beautiful river, so we'll be able to sort of show the uh, winter reflections um, coming down the sheet. So you're like working in different kind of directions. And this will be a, a build of a much larger, more extensive work. Lots of complementary colours happening here between um, the oranges and blues. And of course, it's a really, really exciting sort of winter scene with all of the, the gorgeous tangle of... Um, you know, reeds and bits and that are happening here and these ice cold feel. But it'll have that kind of Christmassy sparkle thing to yes, it. Yes, yeah. So, uh, it, you know, who knows? It, it, you might want to create this as a, as a your own personal greetings card to send to friends. Oh, yeah, um, good idea, good idea. It's yeah, certainly got yes. that Christmas feel about it. Oh, like wow, frosty, it's just... Frosty thing in the air, which is lovely. Um, so yes, yeah, really no, good. if we go back and sort of, show you the main scene yeah this way here over the other side of the uh, grasses here is the river uh, and okay. that is this river Got you. here Got so you. um you can see how this twists back to my village of nunnington in north yorkshire so um the local scenes that we've given you uh are fundamental to um, my landscape belief and my love of my local patch. But yes. within that, you can apply the same techniques into your own um, work. 
yeah let's look at um, that that looks amazing thank you for running through the workshop and it Mm -hmm. is going to be a really great one they're always quite energetic lively events um and uh, Mm -hmm. margaret actually said robert is both an amazing artist and teacher very sharing what enthusiasm and i wholeheartedly agree with you margaret um and if you want to join (laughs) us for this event it's taking place thursday 2nd of december at half past three in the afternoon uk time um spaces are limited and you also get the option if you can't make that particular date um you get the option to purchase the video as well and you can either purchase it by clicking on the link that pops out just here or um i'll show you now by going to our website and using the various uh, links on our website how you can go and book it so you head over to shopkeeparty.com and you click on the live events tab on the top and on that page you can then scroll down all the upcoming live events you saw iris babau oi there who's joining us next week um there's uh, robert and if you click on the c details you can then see all the details that he's been talking about just here and it explains everything that you'll be covering the reference picture and reference photos will be sent out to you the day before so that you can download and print it out the materials are at the bottom of that page as well and then if you want to take part in it you simply click this link if you're one of our patrons already you can use this special uh, discount link as well but um, click on the shop link you'll go through to robert's shop and this is where you can purchase a ticket and you get two options you can either purchase the the live entry ticket to the webinar or you can purchase the live entry plus the video at a discount if you just want the video on the home page of his uh, shop you can see just the video if you'd like to do that when you check out although it's in pounds your local card issuer or bank will convert it to your local currency and once you've purchased the video um, you can then head over to our video library and we put everything chronologically on our, our library so you'll be able to see it so you can play it in the future but the best way if it's after a period of time you can simply search for robert on our artist drop down and once you find him click his name and it will just show all the different workshops so it, there'll be 13 uh, on there after tomorrow uh, today and you can then have a look at the workshop you can click into the class info you can watch the video if you've purchased it and on the class info we also have a link um, to our facebook post where all the attendees of those workshops have shared their art and that's a really nice useful thing for you to go and have a look have a look at the feedback from the workshop but also have a look and have a bit of a nosy at what people have done so it's, it's a really nice uh, way to have a look and uh, and take part in and see what's happened in all the different workshops so hopefully that has been useful for you right so uh, it's time to go back now and join robert if you're watching on youtube you'll now hear some music as the rest of this tutorial speeds up like our other special patron tutorials these live shows and their full length recordings can only be accessed by those that keep helping to support our channel i.e our patrons Uh, without you we wouldn't be able to continue bringing world famous artists to you every week so thank you very much anyhow i hope you've been inspired by what you've seen today and that we'll see you at one of our upcoming live events in real time next time bye
how did you get on with your mark making? We'd love to see some examples uh, from you on how you got on. And as we near the end of this show, if you've got any words of thanks, I can see them starting to come through on the Q&A. Uh, do write them down now and I can pass them on to Robert in a few minutes. We'd love to see what examples of mark making and things that you've created from this show. And the post relating to this class today is already on our Facebook page. So search for Shopkeep Artie on Facebook and you'll find it there. You can also post on Instagram and tag Shopkeep Arty if you'd like. Now, I mentioned earlier the winners of the PPA, the Philippine Pastel Artists uh, competition that we held, where you were invited to watch the recording of uh, one of Robert's previous workshops that we held, and it was a soft pastel workshop um, uh, a few months ago, and then submit your paintings. And Unison Colour Pastels very kindly agreed to give the winner uh, an 18 set of soft pastels, which is worth almost £100. So it's a fantastic prize. Um, and today we can announce the winner. So drum roll. And we <laughs> will... Um, it's a terrible drum roll, but I will now share the screen. And the winner is... Roberto Martin Singh. So Woo! thank you so yeah, much there's your uh, painting there really well done roberto thank you so much and we will um, be in touch and get your address and everything and then we can try and uh, send that pack off to you so well done and i hope um hope you share more paintings that you do with that uh, pastel set as well with us so uh brings us to the end of another great show i'll now go back to robert and i'll read out some of the comments that we've had about this class so uh, margaret said super job see you in december i'm now off to an expensive luncheon <laughs> had to get dressed while i watched <laughs> laugh out loud carried my ipad pro around with me ha <laughs> ha <laughs> well well done margaret i'm glad you didn't miss this uh, for your expensive lunch and you managed to do both at the same time eva yes. said thank you robert this has been my yeah. first introduction to pastel charcoal painting it's been fascinating i've had a very enjoyable afternoon so i just brilliant. might buy some and have a go well there you go That's please do great yeah exactly i hope you haven't got too too dirty um trina <laughs> glad i was able to make it this morning robert is always so inspiring and such a fabulous teacher many thanks and then somebody mm. said fantastic robert great thanks um could certainly not work at the same time but she'll set aside time to create a semi-abstract painting thank you very much mm. and iris babao oi is here as well who we're hosting next week and she said thank you so much amazing demo so thank you iris for joining us yes. on this one as well so um, now, if you happen to be joining uh, Vlad Yeliseyev's full workshop to paint a scene in Prague, I'll see you in about 30 minutes. Uh, if not, I hope to see you next week when, funnily enough, we're going to be joining Iris uh, live from the Philippines in a pastel class. So that should be fun, uh, continuing the, the pastel theme. And on that, I think actually it might be another mixed media. It's pastel and watercolour. So you'll have had pastel mm. and charcoal this week and pastel and watercolour next week. So can't be bad and on that note it brings us to the end of another amazing show don't forget to make a note in your diary for robert's workshop on the 2nd of december it's gonna be a fun one and possibly a bit of an energetic one as well uh, always running around the studio so until next time it's goodbye <laughs> from me but obviously thank you so much for your time and generosity to robert thanks robert <laughs> bye bye right. you get obviously a big round of applause Thank you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and we'll finish on the painting. Thanks, everyone. Lovely. See you then. See you two weeks. <laughs>